They may have circled it. We didn't. You know, it's just another another opponent. Um, you know, now it's over. It was good to get the win. Now we're looking forward to the Jets. It's just another win for us. You know, uh, n another victory, and we're moving on forward and focused in on another good team that we're going to have to handle. It's a division game, and, uh, you know, they're playing really good football right now. It was a good win. Glad we won. It's always good to win on the road. Um, so we've got a quick turnaround this week. Uh, division game. So it'll be fun. Just another win. The Patriots lead the AFC East at 5-0, and and the Jets are quietly one game back at 4-1. and They face each other at Foxborough on Sunday. That'll be fun. Mm. Skip, what chance do you give the Jets this weekend? <sighs> Stephen A., before yesterday, I gave the Jets not much of a chance against the Patriots in Foxborough, but I was looking ahead to December 27th at the Jets, and I thought, that's a game the Patriots could lose. But... One thing happened yesterday that did give me cause to pause. Okay. I'd said going into the year that I boiled down the AFC East this way. The Patriots have Tom Brady and nobody else does. Mm -hmm. Nobody else really had a quarterback going into the season. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, you know how much I love me some QBR, Ryan Fitzpatrick, albeit against the Redskins, had a QBR of 99. That's one short of 100, which is perfect. Yeah. I, I don't know how, because he did throw an interception, so I'm not sure how it all broke down, but he ran very effectively, ran for a pretty big touchdown. And obviously, they were in some trouble at halftime, and all of a sudden, they exploded on the beat-up, maybe decimated Redskins and blew them out in the second half. But Ryan Fitzpatrick has played well enough, and I knew he was pretty I told you before the year, he's pretty good. He's all right. He's, he's all right. He's yeah. all right. But, but he's played better than all right he has. so far. Yeah. And if he plays to bit. that level, yeah, a little bit better. If he plays to that level at Foxborough, they will hang in this game. And yet, I still think I love the way the Patriots immediately moved on last night. And I'm sure Belichick lectured them quickly in the locker room before the media entered and said, we have moved on to the Jets. And that's what I want everybody in this locker room to say. And I do think they emotionally just cut bait with the Colts because you can't play your Super Bowl, as I said earlier in the show, last night and hope to get back up for your most dangerous rival. I thought it was going to be Buffalo. They they blew the doors off Buffalo at Buffalo, you recall, earlier. What is anyway. Yep, and, and they left them kind of for emotional or psychological dead after that game because the Bills have been reeling ever since. Could they do that to the Jets this time? I doubt it. Now that Revis and Cromartie are there, and Buster Screen, that's, that's a secondary, man. So it'll be a long, hard night for Tom Brady, but I still think I'm going to give the Patriots a decided edge this time at Fox. I wouldn't say decided edge. I think they have an edge. But I think that one of the things you would, and I would caution everybody, all you New know, England Patriots lovers out there, although they deserve to be the favorites and they're the better team because they do have Tom Brady, uh, the New York Jets have Darrell Revis on the other side of the ball going directly up against Tom Brady. This isn't a quarterback against a quarterback where one quarterback gets to face a suspect defense and another quarterback gets to face an elite defense. No, this is a top quarterback against a top top corner mm -hmm. who also spearheads that defense and that's what you have in the New York Jets. The New York Jets are the number one ranked defense in the NFL. They are number, what is it, number two against the pass, yep. number three against the rush. And when I look at it from that perspective and you combine that with the fact that you have a guy in Darrell Revis who's incredibly familiar with what New England likes to do, highly intellectual as a football player, I think that's what it's not about. You know, Buster Screen is talented. Antonio Cromartie is talented. Yeah. But Darrell Revis is not only elite, but he's familiar with what New England wants to do because he didn't play for them three years or four years or five years ago. He was on the Super Bowl championship team, the reigning defending Super Bowl championship team that just beat Seattle this past February. Not to mention the fact they hadn't won a Super Bowl in a decade until they acquired Darrell Revis, the ultimate mercenary in yep. football. So when, we, so when we look at it from that perspective, mm -hmm. then you got Sheldon Richardson back who was in the midst of things yesterday. You've got a pass rush with him, with Williams, with Kobe, with all yeah. of these, with Muhammad Wilkinson and these guys. Stout. There is no question that they could put some potential heat 
on Tom Brady, not to mention the fact that David Harris's of the world and others are going to find themselves in a position where I'm not saying they can pull it off, but if anybody's capable of covering Rob Gronkowski, of covering Edelman and Amendola and those boys in their system, it would be these New York Jets. So it's one of those situations where I expect the Patriots to win. Although I anticipate a hard fought, yeah. relatively low scoring game, you know, because I can't see Ryan Fitzpatrick being but so effective against New England. Brandon Marshall's having a good year. Eric Decker's back on the field. Ryan Fitzpatrick has surprised me, Skip. I know he's got like a 76 QBR. He's got, what is it, like seven touchdowns, and I think it was like four, just four interceptions, actually, nine touchdowns or seven interceptions mm -hmm. on the year. But what is completed by 62% of his passes, what's really surprised me about Ryan Fitzpatrick who's been around for quite a while, the beard has him looking old and all of this. Other. He could actually run. Okay. And I'm, I'm surprised. I've been yeah. pleasantly surprised by his ability to run a football. So I expect a hard, hard Ford game. Wouldn't even surprise me if the Jets win. But I think going into the game, because it's in Foxborough and because it's Tom Brady, mm -hmm. I think that you have to give New England an edge. But well, we reserve the right to change our mind by Friday. Okay. And I think this is going to be might. a I think it's going to be a tough match. Okay. Last really quick point. Sure. Remember, just as Revis got to, to look up close and personal mm -hmm. at Tom Brady, Brady and Belichick got an inside look at Darrell Revis last year, too. Good point. That's true. And the only thing is, we've only really seen the Jets for one play road game this year. And that was at Indy, second game of the season. Remember, the road game against Miami was mm -hmm. in London. So... This is their first real road game of the season, as far as I'm concerned. Mm. The Jets have now matched their win total from last year, and I don't. you guys probably didn't see it because the games, but um, 60 Minutes did a great piece on Darrell Revis. Mm. Talk about highly intelligent businessman. It's yes. awesome. It's online right now. He knows what he's doing. The Eagles have dominated the rival Giants recently, so will that trend continue on Monday Night Football? I think not. We pick that game next. Don't miss Monday Night Football when Eli and the Giants face Chip Kelly in the division rival Eagles. That's tonight at 8.15 Eastern on ESPN. A three-game winning streak has New York leading the NFC East at 3-2, while Philly is tied with the Cowboys in second at 2-3. New York is a five-and-a-half point underdog, but the Giants are encouraged about their chances, having both wide receivers Odell Beckham Jr. and Reuben Randall should play tonight. The team will make their final determination of their status a bit later on. Stephen A., who wins, G-Men or the Birds? Well, this is a tough one because normally I would pick the Giants, but I can't tonight. Oh. I have to pick with the Philadelphia Eagles, and here's why. Odell Beckham Jr., hamstring. I don't think he's going to be 100%. Victor Cruz isn't even traveling. Prince of Mukamara will not be there at the cornerback slot. Um, you've got a few pivotal injuries going up against Philly at Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. If those guys were healthy, I would not hesitate. I certainly wouldn't go against my sister, Linda, mm -hmm. who is the biggest diehard Giants fan that I know, mm -hmm. who is sitting there probably cussing me out as we speak because I had the temerity, the unmitigated goal to pick against her Giants, but I think it is necessary in this particular situation in the interest of honesty. You understand? Really? And the courage of my convictions. Mm. Unfortunately, unfortunately, Boy, I hope I'm wrong, but I think the Eagles are going to win tonight. That's your head speaking, right? Yes. Okay. Not the I, voice I, in the stomach. Injuries, uh, injuries. I'm, I'm going to admit to you, I am picking strictly with my heart and not my head because I need the Eagles to beat your Giants for the sake of my Cowboys. So my point is, my, my head says Giants. I told you I thought the Giants were going to win seven straight games. But my heart is screaming Eagles. So now I have to root for Chip Kelly and Sam Bradford and Riley Cooper. Me, I'm going to have to sit and root for Riley Cooper tonight because I need the Eagles to win this game. So I'm going Eagles in a shootout, 31 to 30. Like That's I said, what I'm I would pick, I literally would pick the Giants to win this game somewhere along the lines of 37 27 if. Ruben, it didn't even have to be Victor Cruz. If Ruben Randall and Odell Beckham Jr. Mm -hmm. were both healthy, ready to go, and Prince of Mukamara was in that secondary, I would pick the Giants. But the combination of Cruz out, Odell Beckham Jr. not 100%, and their secondary issues, I can't pick the Giants to win tonight's game. I'm going to pick the Eagles to win the night somewhere like 31 to 21. Aguilar's out for the Eagles. Yeah. Their stud rookie yeah. receiver, yeah. Kiko Alonso, out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Michael Kendrick's out. Yeah. I'm trying to talk you into no, 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 Giants. No, no, the Giants can score their 21 points because of Kendrick's out and those boys, but I just think that offensively, they can find a way to put up points on the New York Giants, and I think the Giants are going to have their struggles because their regular horses mm. aren't in there on offense. Molly, somebody has to pick the Giants, I'm, and now I'm it's a, you. To Go be ahead. honest with you, I'm nervous too. You're nervous? I'm nervous. You're picking the Eagles also? No, I'm not, the picking, the, I'm not picking, the picking the Eagles, but I'm very nervous. Well, I'm very concerned well, about all, all the injuries. Have the courage of your convictions. First play can play Go on Giants. Scared. Huh? That's right. I'm going Giants. Going Giants? No score. They're meeting no with score. JPP today. That's good. Saying loud and proud. Saying yeah. loud and proud. Go, yeah. New York football Giants, Big Blue. I'm a nervous wreck. See you guys tomorrow.